Sorry, guys, I don't know if it's just me. I can't hear you at all. Unmute. Hey, Craig, how's it going? Um, hi, guys. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to our yeah, cool, Springbok yeah. press conference. Uh, we've uh, decided to just have a little bit of a change of format. So um, we've got Jacques, um, Springbok head coach. We've got Mzwandi Lestik, our SAA coach, and um, director of rugby, Rasi Erasmus, all joining um, this call. They'll be on for the full hour. Um, so, um, yeah, if I can just ask Springbok related questions uh, to, to Jacques and uh, SAA questions to um, Zwandile, and then um, if there's anything they would like um, Rasi to, to answer within that regard, uh, you know, then, then he, can, he can do so. So, um, without further ado, uh, please just uh, raise your hand if you have any questions. And um, if I can also ask guys, uh, we've got a lot of people on this call, so please limit it to one question per person. Uh, if there is time for a second question, we will, we will then come back to you for the second question. So our first question goes to Mubin. Hi, good afternoon, Rashi. Good afternoon, uh, Shah. Good afternoon, Stick. Uh, thanks, Ina. Um, a question to you, um, I have to ask Rassi and Jacques uh, specifically, it's just on a selection issue, um, Elton Yankees, um, will he be selected for the end of year tour? Thanks. Alton, hello Mabin, and hello everybody I haven't seen for a while, uh, guys and ladies on that side. Jacques, I'll, I'll answer that yeah. one. So, yeah, yeah on Elton, uh, I think it's well documented that, you know, uh, you know, we mutually agreed with Alton that, you know, there was a, that personal reporting on him while we were on tour just before a really important test match that, you know, we would allow him to, to go back to his, to his home and go and, 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 and handle this personal uh, reporting, which we didn't know what was true and what was not true. Uh, uh, so, yeah, he did that. Uh, and since that, he hasn't played any rugby. Uh, you know, so for us to be able to select him currently, we just haven't seen him play. Uh, and, and what we would love to do is just compare him to the other flyers on pure play uh, and his form. Uh, as we keep, you know, roadmaps on every single player. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't have done this on Elton because he hasn't played since. So, no, he won't be up for selection. Very great. Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, Rassi, maybe if I could start with you and your direct with your director of rugby cap on um, the Women's World Cup. Uh, the loss to Fiji was quite a, a difficult one to take. Have they failed in their sort of objective at the, at the tournament? I know they've still got the Indian game to go, but I, I would imagine the Fiji game was the one they were targeting for a victory. No, definitely. And, and this is probably because we sit all three together here because uh, I think I'll have to give some background on some some of the questions that you're asking. Otherwise, if I just ask answer answer them in isolation, you know, it sometimes wouldn't make sense. So please bear with me if I'm if I'm giving long answers, uh, and and we'll get to to Stoker and to Jacques. You know, uh, I have to 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 quickly just give you a recap. In when we came back from Ireland, uh, you know, the women's 15 men code were closed down because there was just simply not a pathway for women. And, you know, uh, there were girls who played for Springbok women who played for matches in their life. So, first of all, it was life-threatening to them playing against professional players. And second of all, you know, it just wasn't fair to the South African and the Springbok women brand to let those girls play against teams that are, are fully professional. Uh, so, we actually closed down the women's 15 and we started eight youth training centres where we just get the girls yeah, playing rugby, enjoying rugby, socializing, and because you don't have the natural school path uh, or like boys uh, have when they go through uh, schools, any school, not, not just rugby schools. Uh, so when we got back, you know, we actually were running a sevens program for women, uh, almost fully professional, just not as big a contract as the men had, uh, and they were running exactly the same program as the men's seven ran. Uh, and we know how successful our men's program were, and the women's sevens were reporting into the high performance manager, uh, Marius Schumann, and, and it was falling under the seventh department. Um, you know, as we came back, we said we had to find somebody, we're doing something really wrong. I put up my hand and said, guys, I think we're running a men's program with women here, and we decided when I presented to the EXCO that we have to get some a specialist lady in. I think you all know Lynn Cantwell by now. 
Um, and this is the lady who's played seven at the highest level, who's played the 15 uh, code, uh, 15 woman code, and who's won Grand Slams. And I think who's played 87 test matches and is a qualified physio, and a, you know, she's been in world rugby committees and everything. Uh, she did investigation, and you know, the biggest worry was, and I said it straight up, if we don't do something, we're going to get 100 points at the World Cup. You know, uh, um, then with COVID striking, we had to close the, the sevens program and we fully concentrated on the women's program. And we actually got to the point where women's rugby is now our second highest priority. Uh, highly ranked, more higher rank than junior springboks. Higher rank than the blitzbocker. So it's men's springbok and then women's springbok. So uh, I can tell you uh, the fight they put up against the French and I'll close the game against Fiji is certainly the game that we targeted and it's going to be now a really tough test match against England but I believe if we didn't intervene and you look at the progress that they would have made you know I'm seeing Japan way back in 1995 when they lost against the All Blacks the men's team by 145 points I actually think we prevented that and we've got now 19 contracted players and we've got girls who's played a lot of test matches with beat Japan. And yes, um, I actually, if we had a chance, unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to speak to the media. I was actually trying to get that message out that, you know, the Fiji game is probably the big one. And if we can really show progress, sorry for a long answer, but uh, people who has followed the women's game and have seen how our women normally play would see that there's definitely progress. So no, I don't think it's a failure. Sorry for the long answer, but I had to oh, do some great, thank you. Uh, thank you, Zina. I just I got three questions, but I only do one for now. Uh, Rassi, it's good to have you back. Uh, just to confirm, is it only players who are based in France and England that won't be available for the England Test? Is this correct? And if so, is the SA Rugby in talks with those federations or clubs to allow the players to be available for that test? Yeah, you're talking about uh, the main team now for the outside of the window. Okay, so uh, the Japanese players are all available. Um, we certainly have a relationship with some of the French clubs, um, you know, to because um, we, we have played against England outside the window. That was the, you know, the famous under Estres and tackle, you know, Ivan van Sale was playing scrum off. I think it was the first game Damien Willems had played fullback. Um, so on the one hand, it does give you a chance to put the youngster in front of 85,000 people. But then on the other hand, you know, uh, England can pick their best team and it stays at their match uh, seven months out from the World Cup. So we are definitely happy to get the Japanese player available. Our South African franchises has been great because they can actually stop us from using their players outside the window. Uh, they also just franchises and also have owners. A relationship with some of the French clubs we will believe available than we had in the previous time when we played England outside the window. But yes, in principle, uh, they can stand their ground, the English clubs and the French clubs. If they don't want to build a relationship and get South African players in future, they probably should say no. Hi. Um, hi, James. Hope you're well. Um, Jock, just for you, what's the news on Andre Pollard? Probably not the nicest sight seeing him go off, you know, early on his Tigers debut. Is he sort of like in a race against time? Have you guys perhaps earmarked this tour, you know, we might have to just rest and recuperate for next year? What's um, what's the plan with him? Um, yeah, no, uh, Andre had a, um, Andre had an operation uh, after the Tigers game. And uh, obviously he's in rehab now. So uh, um, and returning to to play. So I think uh, the the latest news that I have on him, I, I I think it will be tough for him to make the tour. So uh, I think he. But in saying that, uh, things can happen. But I think yeah, he's still on his way uh, to 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 return. And I I think it will be a tough one for him to 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 make the tour. Craig. Uh, thanks, Ina. Hi, everyone. I think just following on um, kind of that topic of, of the of the fly halves, um, so maybe to 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 Jacques or Rassi, what uh, what is your thinking in terms of the depth at fly half, and, and maybe some of the guys are you considering if if Alton and Andre aren't available? Um, yeah, and 
Yeah, obviously, there's a big debate about the flyoff. Um, and if you think about it, uh, we've got Andre, we've got Elton. Um, and then uh, uh, if you want to put them in a picking order, a guy like Damien Willems has stepped up nicely. And he, and he's starting, he started for us in the last couple of games. In the last game, we, we, we used uh, uh, Franz Stein. Um, and, and we also always in the alignment camps had... Uh, um, uh, um, uh, Hussein, uh with us in the alignment camps, with us in the preparation camp uh, before Wales, uh, as he was recovering from injury, and obviously he's getting a little bit of a go now in the in the URC. Uh, but so I think if you if you look at that, it's probably uh, six fly-offs that I've mentioned now, guys that can uh, uh, cover us at fly-off. And then yeah, uh, and I think Rossi mentioned now there's a couple of youngsters uh, in the URC, not youngsters, but there's a couple of good performances performances from, from fly-offs in the, in the URC uh, that we're certainly keeping an eye on. So I think, um, yes, it, um, it, uh, not having Andre, not having Elton there, uh, um, we're comfortable with Damien and, and he's, he's proven himself in the last couple of test matches and, and then it would be nice to, to, to have uh, you on there, you know, and to, to see how he fall, falls into uh, our program and, and, and how he delivers. And then there will be, obviously, uh, there will be some of the younger guys pushing all the spots. See, can, can I have a follow-on on, on, on that? Sorry, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, guys and ladies, can I, can I maybe just give some context there? Sorry, man, I haven't spoken to you guys in a while. So, <laughs> please, this is just background uh, information. Because sometimes people make an assumption about something. Uh, uh, um, for example, you know, we, if you just look at uh, Franz Stein, um, and, and, and we understand the fact that Johan Kusen wasn't available and Andre wasn't available and Cheslin, who can play fly up, wasn't available and we had Damien there. Uh, and then we put France in there just because, you know, you can't in the week before you play a test match get something new in. Uh, and now we're talking at number five. Uh, uh, um, and, and just get him to understand everything you're doing were a very important test match. And just to give some context, you know, uh, definitely France made some some errors there, uh, but we were chasing 39 points. We were, were so desperately wanting to, to, to beat Argentina by 39 points. And we set ourselves targets in that match uh, where we thought, you know, every 14 minutes we score a try and we slot three penalties, we're in over chance. Uh, and, and then we didn't get to the penalty. We didn't get the tries, you know, one was disallowed by Ivan and so on. And then a guy like France had to bite off more with his touch kicks for the corner. So sometimes when people see that specific kick to the corner and he's biting off more than he normally would, it would it is because we are chasing 39 points. And he's the kind of guy that won't stop if the first one didn't reach the five meter. And I think sometimes that is just because we really wanted to win the rugby championships. And again, uh, I want to always reiterate that, you know, Richie Mwanga is a fantastic player, Bowden Barron is a fantastic player, but they lost to Argentina with those fly-offs. You know, we, we beat them with 15 points with Franz Stein at fly-off. Uh, and, and it was, he hasn't played there in years, and he played a full 80 minutes. I'm not coming up for him, I'm trying to say that uh, sometimes the guts of a guy who hasn't played in a certain position and the mistakes he make is sometimes contributed by the fact how we wanted to play the game. And then, obviously, Kicking a player right in the face wasn't part of it, but yes, uh, uh, maybe just some context. But yes, there's wonderful youngsters coming through, which will probably get a nice opportunity with Stoker in the A side when when we play those two midfield games. Are we here, Yule? Are we here, Yule? Okay, we'll skip that one, Lloyd. Thanks, Dina. How's it, guys? Uh, I, th I think it's for I think it's for Jacques uh, or, or, or or Rassi. Um, but I, I'm just interested in, in the in the in the balance, Jacques, and that you guys have with selection. Um, you know, between URC form and kind of what the box blueprint is and what you're looking for. You know, it's less than a year now till till World Cup. I guess you know, is the URC uh, a vehicle where a player form in a URC alone? can force a player into a box setup, or are there other elements there, uh, other boxes, you know, in terms of the box setup that the player must tick first? Is the URC alone uh, a vehicle for a player to 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 force his way into the box setup? Um, uh, listen, I think, um, if now, again, I'm going to probably come with a little bit of a, 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 a with a bit of a dry. I think if, if you look, when we started back in 2020, 
uh, due to COVID and due to specific reasons, we, we obviously lost out on a whole, uh, can I say, a whole year of development players and getting them through uh, uh, for specific reasons and obviously we played the British and Irish line so um, yeah there was reasons for for why we didn't play in 2020 uh, but that's why this uh, end of year tour with the SAA games is so important for us you know I think if you look at the URC and you look at the SAA game and then you look at the Springboks I think uh, uh, the SAA game is almost like a small little stepping stone uh, for a guy from the URC having a little bit of a, a, a um, can I say a, a more challenging uh, a, a, uh, environment with the SAA side and then a, a nice step up into the Springbok side. So I think that's why it's so important for us this end of year tour in having the uh, the, the four test matches but also the two SAA games. So um, yeah, I think that's why it's important for us uh, um, uh, to almost build them up into our system. But I, I, I guess if you if you look at what happened in 2019, a guy like uh, Herschel, you know, if you if you shoot the light, if you shoot the light out like he did uh, in uh, 2019, I mean he wasn't on our radar in 2018, but then he played so well in 2019 because we used this opportunity, and then he he he, he made the step up from Super Rugby straight into uh, into Test matches, and I think that is also an avenue. Yeah, yeah, Jogan, on that, and guys, one quickly, Arunsa, I mean, Kanan Moody, yeah. I mean, uh, Jaden Hendricks, I mean, you know, it, 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 it's it's definitely not a myth that guys get picked straight from that into Test Match Rugby. Uh, uh, that's why we were so keen to go to to to, uh, to URC in those days, Pro 14, uh, because we know that, that players who can tactically make it there, it's just a matter of fact, and they make it, make it physically there. So, yeah. Uh, I think there's, there's, a, there's great examples of guys who's just made it from URC straight into the stream of team. Uh, guys, uh, Steve has been fairly quiet as well uh, over here. So I just, um, you know, speaking of the SAA uh, team and the, and, and the step up to international rugby, stick for you, how important is that, you know, for the players that, that can get this opportunity? Yeah, I think uh, Z, it's, uh, it's very important, more especially if you look at the depth of what we're trying to achieve you know, in, our, in our squad as a coaching staff, you know, during the year. Uh, when we made rotations against Wales, you know, and there was a bit of uh, some funny reaction somewhere in, in, in the public, you know, where we disrespecting the Springbok emblem. And for us at that time, it was to give players opportunities. And you, we saw if we didn't give guys like Kathleen uh, uh, Arense in those games and uh, uh, someone who went to play against the All Blacks in Bobella Stadium and we actually played well and won the game against the All Blacks, you know. So uh, now, where we are in a good position as an SA team, you know, is to be able to give some youngsters. And we know there's a lot of players that are also performing at the URC. And also, more especially, some of the guys that are also in our squad and in the Springbok team, where some of them, they don't get really get, get more game time, you know. I think it would be a perfect uh, time for us now. Those guys who won't make the team for the Springbok team against Ireland and uh, against France, you know, they will also be able to get uh, some game time against those two uh, midweek games for the SA team, and it's something that we are excited, you know. And uh, we look, we know there's a lot of uh, players up in South Africa currently that are performing very well. So, I'm also excited to see the names we're gonna announce in the in the next two weeks. You know, it, it, there's gonna be a, a good good balance between the experienced guys and the youngsters coming. Liam. Good afternoon, Jens. I hope you're well. Um, Jacques, you actually partly answered my question earlier, but I still want to ask you. Uh, about the year you've lost in this World Cup cycle, do you feel that um, in the intervening years that you've made up ground, given the fact that you've lost a year? Yeah, we we try to, uh, and, and like I said, yes. If I um, it, I, I think um, it was a it was a one hundred percent the right decision to make, and it was a bold decision to make. You know, if you almost way up uh, losing a development year, uh, if you look at the financial implications that decision had. But for us to be in a good position and have our best players available uh, to play against the British and Irish Lions, it was one for player welfare. It was 100 the right, 100 uh, percent the right decision. But it came at a cost. It came at a cost of development. It came at a financial cost. But we're trying. Uh, um, 
as a lot, we, we, yeah, we we were we we are trying to 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 make up the ground that we lost there. And a, a very important thing, I think, when we started in 2018, and maybe Rossi can can jump onto this. When we started in 2018, we actually started building towards 2023, and I think he mentioned it back then. You know, uh, uh, yes, there was a 2019 World Cup, but uh, um, uh, when we, st- I think, if you look at a guy like Ox Nietzsche, you know, we uh, Ox got his first cap in the first Test match that Rossi was head coach and we played uh, um, Wales in uh, in uh, Washington, you know, and, and Oxy is now still a young player, 10 test caps, building up nicely. So uh, Mapim's got his first test cap there. So I think uh, we started way back in 2018 building to uh, this World Cup. And maybe Rasi can uh, elaborate on that. Can I? Yeah. Uh, um, so, uh, yeah, guys, if you don't mind. So uh, I think we have to be honest and we said it right out from 2018. So, uh, Talk you would remember, we said, guys, you know, we have to win, we have to transform, change how, how we operate and, and what the team look like and represent, and we have to build squad depth and, and get experience into the guys. And that was actually with the eye on 2023, uh, but just be brutally honest and pick guys really on form. So um, I think you go and look at teams being back to back successful. I think there's two examples, but the one is New Zealand. I think the average age when they won it in 2011 was 28, and the average test catch was uh, 35 test catch per player. And then when they won it again in 2015, the average age was 28. Um, in other words, they brought, brought in enough youngsters into the team, but they kept the experience, but the test caps went up to 45. How we currently look at our team, we'll probably have an average age of 29 next year, and then uh, probably are close to 46 uh, test caps per player. So, um, yes, we did lose out in the COVID year, but not luckily for us. Uh, uh, we were preparing for 2023 when we started out. So, yes, we lost a year, but luckily our, our target was always a long-term one. The fact that we won in 2019 was, was very nice, uh, but uh, we did have a long-term goal. Can you talk? Um, thank you very much, Zina. I'll ask stick a bit later in this tour, sir. I've just got one for Rasi in the meantime. Um, Rasi, um, are you able to give us an uncle an update? But um, your opinion over the reported overtures that Eddie Jones is making with regards to Sasha Mgomezulu? Uh, yeah, well, uh, I think Sasha has you know, a big chance of making the SAA side. Uh, um, you know, so. Uh, I think if Sasha wants to play for us, you know, you know, he must, he must, he must go and make that SAA side and, and play well for us. Uh, you know, if he does qualify for both, um, you know, it, it's his decision. Uh, uh, we will never try and convince somebody who wants to play for another country to play for us. You know, uh, it must be his own decision. He must want to play, and he must be so, so proud to play for the Springboks, uh, and he must be willing to fight his way up into the top and make it uh, at this stage, you know, when he gets his opportunity, he takes it really well, uh, you know, but uh, if he qualifies for both and, and he'll rather uh, represent England, uh, I'll be surprised, first of all, and second of all, you know, uh, then it's tough to change the guy's mind, uh, so uh, I don't really care what Eddie says about it, it's, it's what Sasa says. Uh, Percy, is your question in English or Afrikaans? Good afternoon, Zina. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Zina, I've got an English question for Coach Stick, but I'm, I'm going to ask you, can I possibly ask some Afrikaans at the end, though, man? Uh, a bit later, yeah, but you can ask your English now. Thank you so much, Zina. I guess you're even thankful. Um, Coach Stick, can I ask you, um, um, Rasi just mentioned at least one name that could possibly be in your SAA side. Can I ask you, firstly, congratulations for being appointed as uh, as the coach of the side, sir. Can I ask you, um, Coach Stick, Usually, as as a youngster in class in my parents' home, I usually get told you must never stop dreaming. Do you, or will this be part of your conversations to some of your players in the SAA squad to not to stop dreaming to make it in that into that Springboks possible side? Though Rasi just mentioned that if the player wants to make it in the Springboks side, he needs to play in the green and gold. So, will you be t- telling your players to not stop dreaming and make it into the Springboks side? Still, I think basically for, for for everyone who's playing this game, if you don't dream to make the World Cup squad or even represent the Springboks, I think you're in the wrong place, you know. I, I'm glad to believe that the players that will be selecting that SA team will still uh, be able to, to do everything in their powers to make sure that they stand a chance to win that World Cup squad. And for someone who's also got one foot on the other side with the Springbok team, I know one thing for sure, the doors are not closed for anyone. 
in that in that in, the, in that World Cup squad. You know, we saw in the past we, we don't just talk the talk. We saw in the past a guy like Heschel, where a lot of people didn't see it coming. Heschel went to the World Cup with us. Heschel and 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 Chesman also giving being given an opportunity at that time. You know, those boys they grabbed their opportunities and they went to the World Cup and they were actually in the World Cup match twenty three. You know, Chesman starting in that game and then Heschel was on the bench. You know, so yes. Uh, I would love to believe that all those guys will do everything in their powers. And uh, for us as coaches, that's one thing that we've always uh, spoke about it from the beginning, that we want to build the squad depth in our team. And you, you saw now what we achieved uh, the past season, you know, with a couple of youngsters lifting their hands up, you know, guy like Jaden, you know, who's been playing very well now uh, for, for our team. Uh, Moody, 19-year-old, someone who was at school just now, being able to play against the big dogs like uh, Mar uh, Coroibeti, played against Australia, played against Argentina. And those boys, I think they did very well for, for themselves. So, yes, I would love to believe that those guys will do everything in their powers. I think that's also, as coaches, something that we leave. If we can give guys opportunities and they grab it with both hands, at least we're also uh, working for our money and doing our job very well. Liam Higby? Hi, folks. How are you? Rossi, lovely to see you back there. Greetings from Ireland here. Just a, two, a two-prong question there for you. How excited are you to be back fully involved with the Springboks ahead of this tour? You, it's, it's been a while it's, it's since, since you've been involved like that. And just secondly, on top of that, when you won, when you won the World Cup in 2019, in the, after the post-match conference there, you made a promise to bring your World Cup medal at some stage to Anthony Foley's grave in, in Killaloo County. I'm just wondering, is that going to happen on, on this tour now that the pandemic's over and you finally get the chance to make a return to, to, to Ireland? Yeah, no, the, uh, yeah, it's nice to talk to you. The first thing is, uh, I think uh, the decision to play against Munster, uh, I wouldn't say I had a lot of influence there, but I do know, first thing is that Munster's got this history of, of, of really putting it up against uh, international teams. I, I think the All Blacks lost to them. I know when we coach said that they, they beat the New Zealand Maoris. And I just think, first of all, uh, and I know it's a sellout crowd and I know how passionate amongst the people are, but also how respectful they are when the team are playing out there. So I think first thing is, you know, for us, the South African A side playing there with guys, and there will be a few of the guys who are actually in the test side, in the test match group of 34, that will be the overflow guys, and there will be some big names playing in that game uh, um, uh, against Munster. Yeah, so, so so that's exciting, that the competition is going to be stiff and it's going to be a sellout crowd, and I know the, the way the, the Irish people support. Yeah, on your second question, um, I don't think I would have been, not that I'm saying I'm good, uh, but uh, maybe I'm average now, but I was... Uh, oh, what Munster did to me on a coaching level, not just the people, but the players and the assistant coaches, and when, when Axel passed away, uh, I think the way I hopefully grew as a person and understand things better and, and people better, because I maybe wasn't great at it and I maybe average at it now, uh, I'll certainly make a plan, you know. Um, yeah, I'll definitely meet up with my sister and... Hopefully Jerry is there around, which is not of all of and me and Felix will definitely try and make a turn there. And yeah, I'll definitely keep my promise because um, Axel played a big part in those f short few months. Uh, um, it was tough times for us uh, when we started out, but we ended uh, really as two close friends. And I love the Munster people and, and the Irish people. Justin Ford. Thank you, Zina. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Coach Rashi, um, this one's for you. It's also a bit of a two-pronged question in that the guys from the EPCR were in Cape Town, or at least in the country last week, talking about the Challenge Cup and the Champions Cup. How excited are you to, to have you know our franchises getting involved in sort of further European competition? And then also the financial implications of certain clubs in England um, are affecting matches where Teams are not playing. They're having to cancel their fixtures, um, and it affects some of the players, South African players. And you, uh, Coach Shock, spoke about tracking these players. So it's obviously difficult for you to track those players if they're not playing. So how is that affecting your your preparation in in that way? Yeah, I think Jockey can answer the the one on tracking the players. Luckily, you know, Vincent is the only real player that's on our radar. 
and he, he's played recently, so yeah. we, we've got a good, um, you know, a roadmap on him. Uh, at Worcester, we don't really have a player for Worcester, I don't know how to say it. We've got a Worcester in South Africa, uh, but Worcester uh, is not really one player there that's that's currently on our radar. We, we're monitoring about 60, 65 players uh, that we have roadmaps on. Um, playing in the EPCR, uh, you know, I think it's the next thing under SAA teams or, you know, New Zealand Maoris or uh, England's A side. I think the EPCR is where you've got the richest clubs in the world, you know, with the greatest support like the French teams, with the English teams and, and the, you know, the, the cream of the crop are, are playing against each other. I think that's something that we would never would have been able at Super Rugby because it's actually, you know, uh, Australia and it's actually New Zealand and Argentina, but uh, there isn't a level above Super Rugby and Test Match Rugby. Now we have a level, we have URC, but there's a level between URC and Test Match Rugby. So for us, certainly now go URC, EPCR, both Challenge and Champions Cup, and then still play a few SAA games. I think we're starting to build a really nice pathway uh, in testing players slowly through different levels, like in the old days when we used to play SAA games. And now EPCR, we love the Heineken Cup, and now all of a sudden, you know, uh, we, we're part of that. So it's it's, it's awesome. Yeah, on the on the just on uh, like Rusty mentioned, they uh, yeah been since uh, can I almost say since he started playing for us, he's been just over two hundred minutes. So we've got a pretty good uh, roadmap on him, and uh, Vince will probably be like our Jap Japanese players in in this uh, break between if you want to call it a break in this period between the rugby championship and us going on the end of year tour. He wouldn't have participated in rugby, but I think uh, if my memory serves me correct, uh, because of the, the injuries that there were to the props at Saracens, I think Vincent last year almost, he was coming in just under 2,000 minutes for, for the year. So I think in terms of his body, this this uh, little break that he had now, and, and it won't be a break. I mean, obviously, he will be in consultation with the, with the SNC staff and the performance staff, so so they will be on his case. But I think from a contact point of view, if you played, if you just come out of the season playing 2,000 minutes as a tight head prop, I think he was exposed to a lot of rugby. And um, and like I said, uh, coming into our environment, he's, he's pretty much on track with the other uh, uh, props that we have, and, and we've got a good... Uh, uh, profile on him currently. Avuile, would you like to try your, your mic again? No, not working. Ross? Thanks, Zena. How's it, guys? Um, Rassi, from your side, how tricky is it logistically to um, plan a South African aid tour overseas like we're going on now? And was there no interest from some of the international teams like uh, uh, Ireland, France or Italy to field an SAA team uh, oh, and France, Italy A team, etc. against our SAAs to maybe give them a sort of bigger challenge than they will face against uh, Munster or Bristol? Yeah, I, I think we actually didn't go and try and do that. You know, we um, it's not a challenge to get the teams together. I, I think we'll definitely give preference. Well, I think we are definitely giving preference. Uh, we had a selection committee meeting this morning. Uh, and again, people just, to, again, reiterate, selection committee meeting is the coaches all giving input and we have the selectors in there. And then we discuss how we want to play, what we're trying to achieve and how far we are from the World Cup. And then on the basis of that, we select a team. And I think the team that Stocker is going to coach, he can maybe speak more about that. But um, the two teams we've selected, uh, do you want to speak about that? Uh, why we selected I'll, I'll, I'll can, I can touch. Okay, you that in, yeah. okay so, so, so basically the two teams that we selected is one, Munster, I promise you, they 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 giant slayers when it comes to that, and and together uh, uh, we knew that that monster is the kind of support club uh, supporters which will fill a stadium and it will give you forty thousand supporters. So you wanted that first of all, so the players play with a Springbok badge on their chest, and we we get to to coach them uh, um, with Galak Stocker leading it. Uh, and we all have, and there's some of the Springbok overflow guys who maybe hasn't played in the first test match, we will play with them. And then Munster specifically, 
play the style of play that we think will face one of the teams in, in the World Club. And then Bristol is where Pat Lamb is coaching, and that's probably more All Black style of play. And again, that's also a Sarah. I know Pat Lamb really well. He's an awesome coach. And the, the way they playing is probably something that we'll encounter with quarterfinals if we, if we play against a certain team. And then, uh, yeah, so it was, I think it was from our side, we had a few options, but that logistically, as you asked, made more sense in terms of travel and getting guys together and giving stock uh, enough preparation time uh, to, to be really, really competitive and make a good team out. I think, I think Coach Ross has summarized it nicely. We, there was a lot of uh, thought behind the decision to make uh, to, to go for those teams. I think if you look at them uh, once again, you know, Munster, they've got a lot of pride when it comes to playing against international sides. They always perform well. One of the top clubs in Ireland currently. And you saw what happened over the weekend against the Bulls. You know, you, you don't pitch up on a day when you play against them. They, I think they're the closest uh, team to what you're going to ex experience at test match level. So I think for the, some of the guys that will be playing in that game, they're going to be challenged in, the, in, in that sense when it comes to the style of play, monster playing. And also when it comes to the Bristol, also you look at the, the expert and the individuals they've got in that team. Also, Coach Russell mentioned their coach. We know the mindset of the New Zealand coaches when it comes to the style of play, but they keep the ball in hand, you know. And with the expert players they've got at Bristol now at the moment, there is going to be a big challenge also in that game. And I think, yeah. You look at those two teams, probably all two singing, uh, two different style of, 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 of game, how, how they play their game. But once again, I think it's what we need going towards the World Cup. And once again, going for, let's say, for example, for Ireland A team or let's say France A team, I think it wasn't going to guarantee us uh, what we expect from them. Because if you look at the team that was playing in Bloemfontein from Ireland, you know, uh, when I watched that team, I, I, I saw a bit of a young team, you know. so. We knew what we're gonna, what we, what to expect from Master. We know what we're gonna get from Bristol. I think that that made it easy choice for us as coaches to to go. Stephen, thanks. See, how's it, guys? Nice to see you. Um, almost a two part question. The first is to um uh, to Coach Stick. Um, I just want to get your thoughts on um, Amani Libok. Um, you know, is um, so, so the question, or, or sorry, the view has been expressed that maybe he's not the kind of player that you guys look at. Um, but there are a few boxes of late that I thought, you know, he's ticked, certainly from a territory uh, perspective in terms of the way he plays and also goal kicking. And um, then just to Jock, um, Jock, will goal kicking uh, be a a big consideration in terms of uh, selection, um, and I'm looking uh, specifically at fly-off. I think for from my side, I've, I've, I've worked, I've, I know uh, Libok since I was playing for junior balls, you know, I've coached him there, I know what he can do. You know, so once again, when it comes to him and seeing now, taking the role of a leader in that, uh, in that, in, in that Stormers team, you know, we as South African rugby, we know that we've always had uh, always had Andre Pollard and uh, uh, what's his name and 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 Elton okay. that have, have always been in the top two, you know. And then now, Coach Rasen mentioned earlier on, Luko Gaza now I think is probably playing his best rugby at the moment. And if you look at around in the, in our franchise in South Africa, you've got guys like Gianni Lombard playing good rugby. You still got also uh, uh, Jordan Hendricks also at the Lions, which is these are youngsters that we're talking about, you know. And then you've got Sasha Gomez who also at the Stormers, you know. So I think at the moment uh, we are in a good position as South African rugby, seeing those youngsters uh, lifting their hands up. And once again, uh, I don't want to comment about what other people said about uh, Libok. You know, we've never said anything. We never commented about the style of play that he will suit in our in our in our in our team. You know, in our culture, he's playing good rugby at the moment. He's got good kicking game, kicks with both legs. Uh, left and right, you know, and uh, and also I, was, I must be honest and say I was also impressed to see how they're handling them, the conditions when you go to the Northern Hemisphere, if you saw the game on the weekend, when they drew, you know, uh, once again, if you kick that drop goal over, everyone would have said, okay, Libok is a, mm. is a, was a hero, you know, and it's part of the game. One thing that I like, I have to be honest with you as a coach, 
the fact that he took a responsibility and make a decision yes. to go for a drop goal. So once again, I'm happy with what we are seeing in South Africa. And there's no such a thing that we walk don't fit in, in our team. You know, if he carries on playing well like he's playing now, anything can happen. You know, no one saw a show coming into our system in 2018. Uh, if you look at the guys like that are performing for our team now, Kelly Arendt. You know, we don't close doors for anyone. If a player is good enough to perform, then that's it. You know, give them opportunities. So once again, um, the more they play well, the better. This was as coaches where we can have a big pool of players where we can select from. Yeah, yeah I was talking spot on. Maybe if I, sorry, guys, to meet interrupting and ladies and Jock can answer onto the goal kicking thing. I know that was your other question. I just think you know uh, sometimes with a guy like Wani Livok, uh, maybe at the franchises where he was previously. You know, we were still playing fullback, then playing fly off, and maybe it wasn't always the number one choice there at those specific uh, provinces. Uh, you know, so we don't have an influence, you know, that's obviously, and we don't want to have an influence. That's their player, they can play where they want to. I think other example like that is is Vessels, you know, who's playing hooker now. We thought we're outstanding loose head prop, you know. So when we look at that and what people say about that, it's not necessarily our our opinion that is what's floating around um, in the provinces or in the newspapers you know from outside we've, we've never said that player so and so he's too light or doesn't play the right kicking game he just didn't maybe get the opportunities in in his position at the franchise you know where a guy like uh, damien Willems is maybe totally the opposite he actually were managed exactly like we loved him to be managed you know play 12 uh, play a bit of 15 then you understand the 10 position better so uh, um, not that we are saying anybody's doing anything wrong but we certainly never had any comments about Marnie's game yeah. or, or any of the others so sorry about the goal kicking time uh, uh steven yeah in terms of the goal kicking uh yeah, obviously goal kicking will always uh be important especially i think when you get to the knockout stages of a big competition like the world cup because uh generally if you look at historically uh it's probably not win with tries um obviously tries is important and it's the biggest source of, of points but goal kicking plays a big part but in terms of that um i i i think Flyoffs doesn't necessarily have to be the goal kicker, you know. So I think if you look at a, a team like Ulster on the weekend, uh, they they fly off doesn't kick for poles. It's their nines, you know. Uh, French clubs love their nines to kick for poles. Uh, I think if you look at uh, even uh, if you if you take Marnie, uh, the, the Stormers, you know, when they played Zebra and Sasha was the twelve and Marnie was the ten, uh, um, Sasha kicked for poles, you know. So I don't think it's necessarily the flyoffs' responsibility to kick for poles. Yes, I think if you go uh, uh, in general and you look at the average, it's it's normally uh, no, uh, not even uh, no. It it doesn't have to be. I think when when if you think in Jake's team uh, when Bucci was the ten and and Percy was the fifteen, Percy kicked football. So I don't think it should. It, it's necessarily always the team's responsibility, but it is important. But it doesn't necessarily have to be a team. But we have to get better at it. The, yeah. the kicking percentage we have. We won't win World Cup. So that, that's that was Stephen and Oscar. Yeah, Stephen. So that, that's a fact. Um, Morgan. Thanks, Zee. Hi, Rossi. Hi, Stoker. Hi, Jock. Um, Jock, either you or Rossi can answer this if possible. Uh, France Stan omitted from this training squad for next week. Is that purely player management, or is it just you just looking exploring other options? Uh, for the for for the camp. Yes, the camp the, jock. Yeah, I think uh, um, when you look at the the, the the players that we invited to the camp, I think that you probably will see three groups there. I think the first one uh, is obviously the Japan-based players. And like I've mentioned previously, uh, when I spoke about Vincent, you know, uh, they, they don't play any rugby currently. Uh, obviously, they are... They've been given some time off, a week off, and, and then our performance team got onto them. So they're busy with, can I say, almost a little bit of a, a rebuilding phase. Uh, but it would be nice to get them involved and uh, involved in rugby and rugby fundamental stuff. So that's why we have the, 
the camp uh, uh, in uh, uh, the, the camp, the three day camp, is just to give them exposed to rugby. And uh, then obviously uh, we had a deal with the franchises. There wasn't supposed to be games played on the 26th. Uh, those games were all scheduled for February. And then the franchises asked if they can maybe move the games earlier. And uh, and uh, we 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 find a, a, a nice common ground there uh, uh, in terms of uh, yes we can play games but uh, then obviously there will be some players that we would like to withdraw from those games you know you don't want to get on a plane and then get injuries on a Sunday game and and uh, and then you have to s select new players and visa problems and stuff like that so from an administrative point of view it was just easier uh, or, or it worked well for us to 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 ring fence uh, uh, some of the players uh, but some of the play and then uh, I think uh, Kanan is a guy that uh, we purely purely want to look at just from a from a medical point of view where he's currently at I think he's probably four weeks now of these uh, uh, his uh, soft tissue injury, so we will just have a, a good look at him. Um, uh, but but in saying that, and maybe Rasi can come in here, we, we also don't want to influence the franchises that much, you know. So that's why some of the players that will be uh, at that uh, um, uh, camp will be uh, allowed to play uh, um, uh, for the URC teams on that weekend. Um, uh, so, yeah, we, we don't want to affect their... Their, their preparation, uh, but it's also getting exposure to our uh, Japanese-based players and then also uh, um, guys that might be eligible for the island team, or, or almost uh, um, uh, knowing that they, they probably won't be injuries in them. Uh, yeah, just maybe to answer the front stand question, uh, I think the, the thing while we were playing rugby championships, we were in a new, unique situation, they weren't club rugby, so we couldn't send a player back yeah. to club rugby, we had to face players in from injury and I know some people say you can't do that but what do you do with a player when even the other players you know who hasn't played URC for a while was five six seven weeks and they haven't played so we're now in a position where they, there's URC games on you know even a guy like Franz uh, you know with his province you know Franz uh, um, at his age I think he's got uh, so many games and he would know uh, left in his body. Uh, um, if you compare him with a guy like Johnny Sexton, uh, I, I think Johnny is two or three years older than Franz Stein. So uh, for us getting Franz Stein in the SAA side uh, or maybe managing him to see if he's good enough, first of all, to go to the World Cup still, and secondly, if, if his body holds up. He certainly had a brave performance, not technically always too good, but a brave performance, and especially what we were trying to achieve in that last specific game. So, yeah, for us at this stage, we, we there's, he's available to play, and we don't need him to come to a camp uh, and work on his fundamentals, uh, because at his age, you know, it's more making sure that he's in a prime condition, if needed, uh, at test match level, or World Cup eventually, and I think there's two or three players that fall into that bracket. Uh, and I think you'll find a, a player, for example, you go and look like Johnny Sexton being managed like that, uh, 100%, and, and, and he's certainly somebody that delivers week in, week out, but being managed really well. Um, yeah, and I think France is, is one of those, uh, and hopefully when he plays, he plays good enough to be still in contention when we get to the World Cup. Uh, guys, we are running out of time, and um, I, there has been a request for just a couple of quotes for the Sunday papers as well. So, can we just switch to a little bit of Afrikaans and Isi Kosa, and then uh, we'll just give five minutes for for uh, the Sunday the Sunday publications as well, please. So, uh, Nathan, I know you had a uh, Isi Kosa question. Uh, thank you again, Zina. Apo moi di bulisi le tata man. The boni ngatune siyali apo. Ko kala si puisa na ngo nyusa na kuako. Kwa angaba unwa la ukuba kumpa kesi o peta ma poko poko inva kwenye ndebe sabat. Inde eben kena itere kare no na ba na ita ndi alvulele tu bantu kwa zungu trust of the position ni kui amani kosi ukale sa i to ingu ba kule na ba because of ke abandon sabi ba na ba utalan sabi ba na ba so sisa huzuma tisa na ba kla 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 mizalo kla kla mizalo midweek. Bonorasin, I was a 
played against the Anoto, I won an end there, of course, and I was a coach to a million junior levels against each other, so they were well and I was a coach to Manila Tuba. And Jago, come to Hong Kong, the look box, and the coach and look box. Hong Kong do have a pupa, have a paper, so come up. So, Lombuzo, the way I will say, the pupa lambla in the future, but if I know the little money to buy the Nazan, and the pressure for Hong Kong, I'll go again. Ukwango, who sends me to say, is to make sure. Kan jy nie in Afrikaans met die duidelikheid geer oor, 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 oor die Alte Njanki kwestie? En aan jou antwoord kan jy ook vir my sê, sê jy vir my die deur is toe vir hom, of is die deur nog oop vir hom na Springbok rugby toe? En ter selde, en selde antwoord as Arassie, jou die eetkundige zien het, is sy welkom terug by SR rugby? En dan vir Zaak, Zaak kan ek nie eens vraag, as jy, as jy, is, vol vir, as jy is vol vertrouwe dat jylle een sterk genoeg groep gaan het vir die laaste toets ten Engeland, want ek sien jou Engels en Frans gebaseerde spelers gaan dan vrygestel word na die toets ten Italië meneer. I said, Zinnach En nou het so, sy is huis toe gestuur om na wel familie haar ouders te wees en hierdie berichtgeving te gaan hanteer. Niks van die goeders waarvan die mense berichtgeving geskryf het, was het gebeur terwijl ons in kamp was, of allegedly gebeur terwijl ons in kamp was nie. So sy is glad nie gestraf toe sy huis toe gestuur is nie. Sy is kans gegin om by haar familie, haar ouders, haar pa uit te kom, en, en of het nou legal help is, of net emotionele ondersteuning is, uh, en, en, en dier een moeilike tyd te gaan, en dan natuurlijk ook die span, die beste geleendheid te gee om te concentreer, uh, op dit wat belangrijk was in Naweek, wat die, wat die wedstrijd was. Um, ja, en ek dink, betekker is ouwe redelijk goed ter spraak, en mens betekker is een bykie meer dink aan die mens. En, uh, uh, you know, weet, uh, um, ek kan nie, ek kan nie comments lever op goeders wat, wat hoor sê was, uh, uh, en nie so, weet, daar is geen, absoluut, absoluut geen rede, hoekom ons nie vir, vir sien dat al saamvat, en sy sal daar nie saamvat, ek bedoel, sonder haar, uh, um, ja, ek het ook misschien nie die rechte dag het gevolg nie, maar sy, ons het daar bitter nodig daar so, uh, en wat is die tweede vraag, het was een mond vol, as kies man. <laughs> ek vraag net, is die, is die deur nou toe vir Alte Jankies, of sê jy, is toch een mondlikke dat hy... Nee, nee vir Alte Jankies, weer eens, um, Ek bedoel, dit is persoonlijke berichtgeving wat, uh, mens moet nou daar, Elton Jankies is Japanese speler, hy behoort nie aan SR Rakmi nie, hy het nie een contract met SR Rakmi nie, hy is nie een pony speler nie, en as hy op een nabek huis toe gaan en hy doen wat hy wil in sy persoonlijke hoedanigheid, uh, um, ons kan nie, ons kan nie verantwoordelijk gehou word as iemand die sy water en lichte rekening of so iets betaal nie, so, jy weet, wat hy in sy persoonlijke hoedanigheid doen, uh, um, uh, van hy, hy is nie een speler aan ons behoort nie, so, hy kon geen 10 protocols of niks gebreek, uh, gebreek het nie, so, uh, die enigste rede, hoe kom ons om nie kies nie, is oor hy nie nou rakkie speel op die stadium, ons kan hom nie vergelijk met ander, met ander loskakel sien, maar as daar weer een fiks Elton Jankies, wat seker 4 jaar jonger is, en ons is Johnny Sexton is, en hy speel perfecte rakkie, en goeie rakkie, en hy speel so goed as die ander loskakel, is die deur verseker vir hom op, maar op die stadium is daar niks teen, wat ons ook een meet heen, want hy speel die rakkie nie, uh, so, uh, ja, sorry, seker weer een mond vol, as kies. Uh, Persie, ja, in termen van die toets in Engeland, ja, ons is, uh, bev- ek dink, as jy gaan vat, ons het uh, die laaste wat ons het toets gespeel het, buiten die uh, toetsvenster was geweest in 2018, en het is ook in Engeland geweest. en ek dink, ons is in een beter positie nou, in termen van die spelers, omdat ons hier die goeie verhouding het met die Japanese rugby, en je weet, en hulle het hulle spelers beskikbaar gestel vir ons, maar soos jy terecht sê, ja, ons gaan nie toegang het tot ons uh, Engelse spelers of ons Franse spelers nie, um, uh, 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 met partij van die Franse uh, klaps het ons goeie verhouding, so 
Misschien als daar een geleentheid is, zal hulle een van hulle spelers uh, vrijstellen en vraag, laat ons hulle speel of niet speel nie, maar dit, dit sal altyd, uh, dit, dit is maar een verhouding wat je bou met die club. Um, maar aan die andere kant, dit, dit skep weer geleentheerde vir, vir, vir Zuid-Afrikaanse ouwens, wat in die Zuid-Afrikaanse liga speel om daar te speel. Maar ik denk definitief, als jy uh, gaan vergelijk die span wat ons in 2018 gespeel het, uh, ten oor in die span wat ons nou kan speel, ek denk ons kan baie meer van ons uh, van, van die ouwens wat ons meestal gebruik het in die rugby kampioenskap, is kan baie meer van hulle uh, kies vir daar die uh, wedstrijd. Aspak? Thanks guys, hy is uh, Stokke, Rassie en, en Jack. Um, ek sal my Afrikaans gooi. <laughs> um, Jack, net in termen van die loskakels, um, uh, Polly en, en, en Elton gaan nou nie toerie, en, en sien jy nou vir Damien Willemse as die nummer 1 loskakel op die oomlik, want ek weet, hy het by een heel achter gespeel, en hy speel die 12 vir die stormers, en dan is selde as hem, uh, Johan Goosen, hy het nou nie baie rugby gespeel, hy was elk maanden uit, hy het nou baie games, Bulls, uh, heel achter gespeel, en dan uh, loskakel, en hy het die verlede week gespeel van die 4G Pitchy, um, hoe sien hy vir hom, waar is hy nou in termen van sy comeback? Ik denk, uh, um, ja, die eerste ding, ja, Damien, obviously, Damien was van die begin af, toe ons begin het in, uh, um, in Teen Wallis, het ons gesê, luister, ons, ons uh, fly-offs uh, was gewees, uh, André, Elton, en, en dan Damien, jy weet, uh, met, en ons is gelukkig in die positie, dat ons een paar utility spelers het, uh, uh, ons het een Frans Stein gehad, ons het vir Cheslin gehad, um, en, uh, ja, um, Maar as gevolg van beserings het, het, uh, het ou soos Damien meer geleentheid gekry op 10, jy weet, en ek dink hy, hy, hy was uitstaande gewees op 10 vir ons, so uit die aard van die saak as gevolg van waar ons nou sit, is hy ons nummer 1 kese, en dan altyd, uh, uh, Johan Goosin was altyd deel van ons uh, alignment kamp, hy was deel van ons kamp in, uh, uh, in Pretoria voor die Wallis toetse, uh, waar hy nie kon oefen nie, maar hy was by elke uh, uh, meeting wat ons gehad het, hy was op die veld, hy het saam met stokke, was hy so half, kan ek maar amper sê, player coach gewees, so dat hy so half kan uh, die, die, ons goals optel, uh, die manier ons wil speel, so ek dink, uh, hy is redelijk uh, in ons kop, en ja, hy sal, uh, um, as alles goed gaan, en as die beserings nie, dan sal het lekker wees om om toer te vat, jy weet, dis, dis iemand, ek dink, Johannes 31, hy het 13 toetse gespeel, al vir Zuid-Afrika, dit sal, ek het hom nog nooit afgerig nie, dit sal lekker wees om hom in die groep in te kry, en te kyk of, of, uh, of hy dit genie daar, jy weet, en of hy, uh, en, obviously, hy, hy, hy sal met perform, hy sal met goeie rugby speel, maar uh, ons weet, hy is een kwaliteitsspeler, en as hy op forum is, en hy is 100% fix, dan, uh, dan geloof ek, hy sal die ding kan doen. Um, last question, before we get to just the Sunday papers, just for three minutes or so, uh, can you so? Um, thank you very much, Zina Pumoy. Mas bu liste man, ma findes fui sale na we bagge kuko no sana lo chagelu figi le. Um, Pumoy, skus jam bagge kuchun jel kalage lim zafriga e. It tedu ti de genge ska bagge samalung sele lo gende bechabati guba. Lunya kagena lunya guza yu tsosok lo sele gende bechabati. Gya tan bak ni mon kuku be fele waba no be fele bonza kalenge spiti pit. opportunities <laughs> Uh, Bakwana 
Okay, cool guys. We are going to just switch over to just to give the Sunday guys an opportunity uh, to ask three or four questions and then we'll wrap up. Uh, so Hendrik, um, over to you. Thanks, Zina. Hello, Stokke, Rassi and Jock. Um, Rassi, what's the do with the tour in November? What will you do What will you Jock and Stokke do? Uh, heel, ek denk van die begin af het ons gesê, 2018 af het ons gesê, wen, wen is belangrijkste met die drie been onder het, en dit is uh, transformatie sê, en ek wil verandering sê, uh, want uh, transformatie klink altijd my so uh, wit uit en zwart in, en vir ons was transformatie verandering in die span, we het vrouwens in die management team, hoe ons dinge doen, hoeveel harder ons werk, you know, uh, hoe, hoe, hoe ons dinge doen, hoe ons met die media reageer, en ek moet sê, met die Bloody World Rugby Band, het ons daai ketting van Stronger Together, waar ons oefen en al die dinge doen, en ons gee jylle ons genoeg access, so dat jylle vir die mense uh, correct en rapporteer of berichtgeving skryf, en dan kan die mense kyk ons satra speel, en, en dan besluit of ons support of nie, ek denk, die ketting was bykie gebreek, uh, as gevolg van die World Rugby Band, en mys kon nie altyd die rechte boodskap vir op die waarheid by jylle uitkry nie, so daai en is, is change, so ons omhuis, en dan squad diepte, is obviously die volgende een experience. Uh, en dan heel belangrijk, ek denk Jack het die jare 66% wenrekord, en in 2018 het ons een klomp kansen gevat, ons het 48 spelers al hierdie jaar gebruik, en ons het nog 4 toetsen oor, en weet, daar was nog net 900 oud springbok in die geschiedenis van die game, so, en hy het 48 hierdie jaar gebruik, so ons is definitief spannend, as jy weet, die net baie weit, tis die SA Aspen game, plus 4 toetsen om te kom, so, ons wil ten nummer 1 en 2 in die wereld gaan probeer wen, wat Frankrijk en, 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 en Ierland is, en trouw om in te wees, as ons in die World Cup jaren gaan, en dan is het om, obviously, aan die twee toe ook te trouw wen, maar dan is het om seker te maak, uh, ons filter is werk rarig, 100% reg, as ons volgende jaar ingaan, dan weet ons precies, wie is die, wie is die perre wat ons back, en, 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 en hoe ons hulle gaan back, so, dit is seker in een nutshell, in een nutshell, in een mondvol, die verduideliking. Dankie. Thank you, Z. Um, hello, Rassi. Hello, Jack. Hi, Stokke. Um, Stokke, you, you pressed um, CIA for an Afrikaans answer the last time we saw you in Cape Town, so maybe you can add to this as well. Um, but just, um, Jack, how difficult will the task be to, to uh, of how moeilijk zal die taak wees om um, die SAA ouwens te kry om die blauwdruk te speel wat, wat jylle verwacht van springbokke, Va, vooral omdat hulle nie werkelijk um, deel, deel is van, van, van jylle setup tans nie, um, en, en uh, Stik, if, if you can just add to that, um, just what's the blueprint that you will be using for that um, SAA team? Um, will it be a box blueprint or, or will you allow the, the guys to just express themselves? Um, we know when you shuffled the team against Wales, it, it didn't quite pay off um, with, with what you wanted. Um, yeah, yes, I can do. Kijk, uh, as a, a man so praat van a blow drink, a uh, oud sitte, kan ek maar sê, uh, um, uh, framework daar, vir as daar druk is, vir die spelers om hulle self weer te vind, jy weet, as daar bykie uh, disruption is, as daar kaart is, as daar, as die spanne onder druk is, dan, een blauwprint is maar eindelijk net waar, een speler kan ingaan en net weer uh, bykie sekuriteit krijg. Maar die grootste ding wat ons coach, is om opportunities te sien. Jy weet, binnen in die blauwdruk, moet jy, moet jy spasie sien. En betekend is die spasie in die, voor, in die frontline, en die, uh, as hulle drie of vier ouwens terugdrop om het ons kop, en dan moet jy die, dan, dan moet jy die um, geleendhede aanvat, en dan moet jy die bal in hand hou. En betekend is daar veertien ouwens in die, in, in die lijn voor op defense, en net een ou achter, jy weet, en waar is die spasie dan? Die spasie is een ou met, vijf, met 7 meter uh, cover, so die spasie is dan oor die lijn, jy weet, so, uh, ek denk, weer eens, een blauwdruk is daar, as die span onder druk is, en jy 
um, uh, en, en miskien is die confidence bykie laat, want jy laag, want jy het nie een goeie begin gehad nie, dan is dit een lekker manier om weer, uh, net weer jou voet terug in die game te kry, weer bykie druk te bou, maar die oomlik is daar uh, geleentere is, dan moet die ouwens die geleentere sien, en hulle moet die geleentere vat, en hulle moet die confidence sê om te vat, uh, maar daar sal nie een blauwdruk wees, luister die, jy moet nou so speel, nie, elke speler het sy eie unieke, um, en is miskien bykie te technisch wat ek nou kan sê, maar, gaan sê, maar a Jaden Hendricks, a Faf, a, 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 a Grant Williams, a Kopus Reinach, dis vier verskillende skramhafs, ek kan nie Jaden Hendricks laat speel soos Faf nie, ek kan nie Faf laat speel en sê hy moet speel soos a Grant Williams nie, jy kan nie vir Kopus Reinach met sy spoed a, vraag om te speel soos Jaden Hendricks nie, so on, on, ons, daar is a, daar is a plan, uh, of een blauwdruk, as een oude de blauwdruk wil noem, maar eerst dan met elke speler, hy het sy eie unieke individuele skillset, wat hy na die party toe moet breng, jy kan hom nooit mal, jy moet so speel, of so speel, of speel, so speel nie, so, uh, ons vraag dit ook nie van spelers nie, um, hulle, 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 hulle met hulle eie uniekheid, na, uh, um, uh, na die span te breng. Ja, uh, yeah, I think from my side, now, you, you ask about the blueprint, if you think about it now, before the monster game we're going to play, probably as a SA team, we'll probably have one defense session on training, then we'll have one, uh, pro- probably about 20 minutes of attack, you know, so are we going to try a lot of things on how we want to play those, those games? It will be stupid for me to, to come up with all these brilliant ideas and try to change how we're going to play. Yes, I'm still part of the Springbok uh, uh, system, you know, and, and those players, there for them, it's an opportunity for them to show to us as a Springbok coaches that they can uh, step up to the test match level. So I don't think we're going to have a, a, a lot of changes of how we want to play the game. But once again, I want to add on what Jack was saying earlier on. I think my Africans know that better. I, I could understand everything. I want to add on what Jack was saying. Our players, they know they've got all the power and the freedom to make decisions in the field. If they on a day decide to run into the wider spaces by putting the ball into end, two ends, they know they've got all the power because of once again, we don't want to coach a robot. We always say to our players, when the opportunity is there for them to take, they must always take it. And that's why sometimes it's funny for people when they say to us after the semi-final when we played against Wales in the World Cup, they said people they said we've changed our game plan to uh to, to, to the final game against England. You can't you can't change the game plan in a space of six days to go and play the World Cup final and want to come up with different ideas, you know, and and all these fancy things. So, no, we don't do that. We don't do that. Our players, they they know they've got the, the freedom, you know, to to take the opportunities on the field. We're not going to change much also on what the Springboks are playing. We're also going to be similar to how I'm talking about the mindset now, you know. Once again, as a South African team, set pieces, we, we don't want to negotiate. We want to be strong in that sense. And we know defense and the kicking game is part of our DNA. So yes, they must be able to also execute that kind of plan. But on the other side, when the opportunity is there for all the guys that are on the field, they must be able to take and move forward and so uh, Guys, we have to wrap up soon. So uh, let's just take two more questions. Um, Hendrik, it was your request. So so you can fire away and then we'll take one from Liam. And then, sorry, guys, then we have to wrap it up. Thank you, Zina. Um, Jack, I'll ask you for your question. Is jy happy met die diepte op 13 en daak sê ek nou sommer geleentheid om jou te vraag, wat het jy van Henko van Wijk gedink so ver die, die jaar? Ja, ja um, ek dink, ja, as, as jy kyk na centers uh, van 2018, soos so, so, as jy ons uh, gesê het in, in die persconferentie, ons bouw al van 2018 af, maar as jy gaan kyk oor die algemeen het ons uh, basis uh, vier uh, centers gebruik, uh, Damien en andere Estruisen op 12 en Lucanio en Jesse op 13, uh, maar ook dan utility uh, backs waar jy, uh, um, ons het al vir uh, Damien Willems op 12 gebruik, ons het Frans Stein op 12 gebruik en dan obviously Damien wat uitskuif 13 toe, maar eers ek moet sê, ja, um, daar is een paar goeie um, centers uh, tans in Zuid-Afrika wat uh, alle ander opsteek en, en, en wat goeie rugby speel, so ja, nee, definitely een oogie op hulle, uh, ons, ons hou definitely een oogie op hulle, um, ek denk Sasha het goed gedoen toe hy op 12 gespeel het, Henke het goed gedoen toe hy op de, speel goed op 13, uh, Marius Lauw speel goed op 12, ek denk daar is, as jy, um, um, Kornel hulle speel goed, uh, ek denk daar is een paar goeie um, uh, centers waar al rondloop, ja. En dan laat die leem, uh, question for us. So you mentioned 
you used the word filters um, earlier. Um, I take it that by the end of this tour that you would have seen um, all the players uh, that you need to see uh, ahead of the World Cup. Um, is the door then shut? I mean, basically, you'd have had the, the end of your tour and you've had uh, the SAA team playing. Well, is there any chance of any other player coming? No, 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 no. I mean, uh, somewhere Arges Neman has to play again, you know, so the door can't be closed. Uh, uh, a specimen like him and the guy's done it before, even though he hasn't played for two years. I think if he plays three games somewhere, he's just going to knock the door down, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, you know, uh, but because we've trialed 48, not trialed, we've seen 48 players and we're now going to go with 54 players there and we play SAA games and we have four more roadmaps, you know, uh, uh, you know, I do think we're trying to to track every single player out there. Uh, but when I say filter, it's actually the believe it or not, but in the URC and Springbok level, the the, the the time is just four or five seconds less, uh, uh, and everything is just faster. So um, you have to filter him into that system and say, okay, now you're going to play against Gordon Betty. Can you handle that? Can and good. You know, uh, uh, we could see that, we tasted that, we made it, you know. So it's difficult, and I think there's an A game, just the pressure of wearing a, uh, a badge on, on, on your chest and, and, and playing in front of 41,000 people uh, will already help us to filter again. It's not sometimes just this, the skill level, it's also the, the mental side of things of where a player is. So, yes, there's always a gap for somebody who, who knocks down the door. And I know how he's experienced players, but a young guy can also do the same. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you for uh, joining our press conference. Uh, we'll be sending out the recording shortly. Have a lovely day. Okay. Thank okay. you. Cheers, man.